Light is a lot like Sunday. You know, check it out. You go out there and you throw out your towel, you know, on the nice warm sand. You kind of smother yourself down in all this protection so that you don't get burned from the sun. You know, you kind of get a nice, peaceful, thoughtful, relaxing attitude. And then you just take your pillow and you lay back in the sunshine. And you just kind of let the sun bathe you. You know, give you a sun tan. Kind of relax your soul. Cause peace to flow like a river upon you. To take away all the stress and let your body begin to rest in the peace and the joy of the sunlight. That's kind of what being in the light is like. Resting in that which Jesus has done. Being as though you were in one place at one time, just <sighs> catching a suntan. Is your Christianity like that? Are you catching the rays? Are you enjoying the days that God has made for you today? Are you camping out in the sun? Let the sun of righteousness rise with healing in his wings, we're told. And the sun is spelled S-U-N. When you lay back and relax, when you enjoy the things that God is doing, you catch a suntan. You can tell the difference between someone who's been in the sun and someone who hasn't. You know, the guy that's been in the sun is all tanned and golden and kind of kind of looks like they've been in the sun. But the guy or the girl that's kind of like all white and kind of puffy and pale like a dead body or a ghost, they haven't been in the sun much, have they? Our lives were meant to be glorious in the sight of God. He has caused us to know His Son and to reflect the image and the glory of God in our lives as we begin to bask in the promises of God, but also in the provision of God, in all those things that God has said He would do for us. Walk in the light, as he is in the light, and we have fellowship one with another. If we enjoy that type of light that God has given us, then we'll see, as it were, the clouds pass away. We'll see the sunlight begin to come through streaming in the day. We'll see those times when the glory of God will come upon our circumstances and we'll know God in a way we've never known Him before. Isn't that really the kind of God we serve? The kind of Jesus that causes us to want to follow Him? Isn't that really what you want in life? To catch your rays from God and not the sun today? Hmm. I like being a Christian. It's grand. But for some of you, you're still singing that song, Ain't It Grand to Be a Christian? Ain't it grand? On Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all day Sunday. Ain't it grand to be a Christian? Let God dwell in you richly in all wisdom and honor and glory and mind. And you may find that the light that goes forth from you may cause others to want to see it, to demonstrate it, to find out what it is that you have discovered. Because you see, without being in the light, you really don't know what you're talking about because you're in the dark. Hmm. So today, are you in the dark? You don't have to be. 
Are you in the light? Have you ever laid on a beach and somebody came up and stood in front of the sun when you're trying to catch a suntan? And you kind of had to cover your eyes to look at them, you know, and you couldn't quite see them because the sun was behind them. Jesus will appear as a glorious one. But it'll still be that man that we know that we want to hold in our arms and hug and be hugged by. Oh, but men don't hug. Yes, they do. Men do. We're even told, kiss the son lest he be angry. Shall we not? You see, I don't allow anything to come between me and the sun because I want to catch full spectrum rays from what God has to give to me today. And so, while I may use some suntan lotion in order to cover my skin from being fried, huh, the reality of letting God do all He wants to do is my choice to just expose myself to the light as He is the Son of Righteousness rising with healing in His wings. If you would be healed today, if you would be helped, if you would be holpen, as the old King James word says, then you must cling to, respond to, and cry out to God. And lay back and let the light of God shine upon your life. Leaning on Jesus' bosom, as one whom his mother comforted, so will I comfort you. They brought young children to him, whom he should touch them, and he should take them up in his arms, and put his hands upon them, and bless them. And Jesus called his disciples unto him, and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they continue with me now three days, and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. A high priest, touched with the feeling of our infirmities, in his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget but I won't forget you. The Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them into living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. When I look to the Lamb of God that was slain, know that in heaven, at the mention of his name, all the angels fall. Who am I to stand? Am I not to blame for the lamb that was slain? They cry, Holy is the lamb of God that was slain, falling prostrate on their faces giving praises to his name. Was it not for me he died? Am I now so known in giving the same glory to God's only Son? Hallelujah to the Lamb that was slain, that was slain. To the Lord that was slain, that was slain. Ah, and it makes me want to love you. Mm. It makes me want to love you even more. When the Son of God died, Hope died with him. But when the Son of Man rose, when God raised him from the dead, 
hope became eternal. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love.